here i will talk about the histology of stomach and the food coming from the mouth will enter the stomach through the esophagus and here is the esophagus and the stomach next to esophagus is cardiac region of stomach this is the fundus and body region and this is the pylorus region of stomach which is situated next to the pyloric sphincter Now if we zoom into the cut section here we will see how the stomach lining is the stomach have some invaginations and these invaginations form the gastric glands of the stomach these gastric glands are surrounded by specific cells and the cavity in the stomach line because of the gastric invaginations are called the gastric pits this layer where the gastric gland is present is called the mucosa layer the layer next to the mucosa is a submucosal layer here the blood supply is are present and some connective tissues are also present the blood vessels here this is the submucosa layer the next layer after the submucosa is the muscle layer that is a smooth muscle layer there are three smooth muscle layers in stomach the first is oblique muscle second is circular muscle layer and the third is longitudinal muscle layers all of three will lay all of three will make the muscularis layer next to the muscularis layer is the serosa layer which will include connective tissues this is a serosa layer now if we zoom into the cells present in the gastric gland i am drawing a simplified diagram of a gastric gland and the cells present here the cells surrounding the gastric pit or the gastric gland are mucus cells the gastric gland have three parts isthmus neck base or body of the gastric gland these are the mucus cells which will secrete mucus to protect the stomach from the acidic environment mucus cells are present outer region or pit region of the gastric glands in the isthmus region we see a cells called stem cells these are totipotent cells and gives rise to different cells as needed these cells are situated both in isthmus and neck region of gastric gland stem cells present in neck region these are the parietal cells it has intracellular invaginations that are called canaliculi these parietal cells are also called auxentic cells these cells secrete hcl that is hydrochloric acid in stomach which makes the stomach environment acidic and these are present in wall of both isthmus and neck region parietal means wall at the neck region some neck mucus cells are present these cells are also called foveolar cells neck mucus cells also release mucus 
but that are different from the epithelial mucus cells. These are present in neck region of gastric glands. The next important cells are cheap cells or zymogenic cells that are present at the base or body region of the gastric gland. These cells release pepsinogen which is a precursor for pepsin. Pepsinogen will become pepsin in acidic region and help in digestion of protein and chief cells also release weak lipase to digest the lipids. Chief cells are mainly present in base region. Next, the enteroendocrine cells. Under enteroendocrine cells, we will see three kinds of cells. First, the ECL cells here. ECL stands for enterochromaffin-like cells. These cells release histamine which will stimulate the parietal cells to release HCL. These cells are present near the parietal cells. Next enteroendocrine cell is G cell. G cells release gastrin. Gastrin is a hormone which is mainly released in the bloodstream but it also stimulate the parietal cells to release HCL and these are also found in base region. The next cell is D cells. D cells release somatostatin hormone. These hormones inhibit the parietal cell to release HCL. These are also found in the base region of gastric gland. There is a nerve called vagus nerve which also stimulate the parietal cell to release HCL when we eat food. The mucus layer releases mucus and bicarbonate. Parietal cells releases HCL and the chief cells releases pepsinogen and lipase. In enteroendocrine cells, ECL cells will release histamine which will stimulate parietal cells to release HCL. G cells will release gastrin hormones which will also stimulate parietal cells to release HCL. Next D cells will release somatostatin hormone which will inhibit the parietal cells to release HCL. Now we will see in recap. The gastric gland will have parietal cells which will release HCL, the chief cells which will release pepsinogen for protein digestion and weak lipase for lipid digestion. Next enteroendocrine cells under which there are three cells, ECL cells which will release histamine. G cell which will release gastrin, D cell which will release somatostatin hormone. Histamine and gastrin will stimulate the HCL secretion and somatostatin will inhibit the HCL secretion. There is one more cell, mucus cell, which will release mucus to protect the stomach. Let's look into the stomach again. The cardiac region of stomach, fundus, body and the pylorus region of stomach. If you look into the stomach wall, this is a serosa layer, the three smooth muscle layer, this is the blood supply layer that is submucosa layer 
and this is the mucosal layer having the gastric glands. If you see in the gastric glands, in the cardiac region of stomach, mucus cells are more in gastric glands. In the body and fundus, the gastric glands will have parietal cells, ECL cells and chief cells mostly. And in pylorus region, gastric glands will have D cell and G cells.